Who would have thought that at this point in the season, after watching the first six weeks of football, that we'd be sitting here with Kansas going to Baylor as one-and-a-half-point favorites, that this game would mean a ton for both teams. Baylor has a chance to make the Big 12 championship. All right, there are outcomes. There are outcomes, and more than one outcome uh, that can happen that can basically launch Baylor into the Big 12 championship. Kansas at 5-6 and right now is playing for a bowl game, which we know that that program hasn't done a lot before. I know that's the expectation under Lance Leipold now, which is ridiculous that he's, you know, changed that expectation in that program. But yeah, it's this game means a lot, you know. Baylor, what they need basically there's a couple different scenarios, but they kind of look like this, right? If Oklahoma State beats Colorado, then all they need to have happen is Kansas State wins, TCU wins, Arizona wins, Baylor and then Baylor's got to win, right? <laughs> I say that's all that needs to happen, right? But two of those teams are favorites, right? TCU and Baylor. And then Arizona, that's a rivalry game. And then Kansas State, that's Farmageddon, you know? So uh, if Oklahoma State doesn't win, you know, Colorado wins, then they do need Houston to upset BYU, Kansas State uh, to also win, then Arizona to win. So either Houston or Oklahoma State basically needs to win. And then Arizona kind of needs to win. So there's still a situation where Baylor can make – the Big 12 championship. And I believe there's like two or three more scenarios that would allow for Baylor to make it to the Big 12 championship. But those are kind of the big ones right there. And I know like if you parlay those scenarios, one of them gets you like plus 14,000. The other one gets you like plus 8,000, you know, which is long shot odds, but they're playing for something, you know, they're going to be playing for something. So I'm super excited for this game. Both of these teams are playing really good football right now. Sawyer Robertson, I want to credit you on this one because this was last season that you pumped up, you hyped up Sawyer Robertson a lot, and he disappointed all of us. And I don't think you were necessarily off the train. You were never off the Baylor train with Dave Aranda, and I credit you for sticking with him because I certainly was off the Baylor train, believing that he was going to probably get fired, that this was going to be his last season. I believe that Sawyer Robinson stunk and that Daquan Finn was going to be the guy that maybe could save him his job. But guess what? Sawyer Robertson is playing some damn good football right now. And Baylor looks like a damn good football team that's pretty dangerous. They're power rated higher than people think. Um, Sure, they've had their issues this season. But these last couple weeks have shown that this Baylor team has got it in the Big 12. And that they, they can compete with some of this upper echelon talent there. And they are hosting... This Kansas football team that's also hot as well. Jalen Daniels playing great. Devin Neal coming off a, what, 300-yard performance on 37 carries. So this Baylor football team, which has done a pretty good job stopping the run, still has quite a test in front of them. Yeah, I mean, it's going to be awesome. Like you mentioned, why are we previewing this game? Well, look what's happened, right? Baylor, not only things that can happen when Baylor's still alive for the, the Big 12 Right, that they won five straight. Kansas has single handedly just screwed everything up in the Big 12 because they have beat Iowa State, BYU, and Colorado, all handing them their second loss. <clears throat> their or two one of their two losses in the Big 12 there. I mean, it has been awesome. They looked like a team that was dead in the water, and they still had to play, you know, their toughest opponents left Kansas State on the road, Iowa State, BYU, Colorado I mentioned, and then now Baylor who's playing great football. They're still one win away from bowl game, like you mentioned. This is going to be awesome. I hate doing this, but again, I'm going to take a road to, uh, a road team here in the Big 12. I'm going to go Kansas minus one and a half here. That line flipped, right? It was it opened, you know, I think on the other side for Baylor. To me, you look at some of these margins and you look at some of these things. And by the way, I'm going to read off a couple stats here. I only filtered in November because – these are different football teams, right, than what we've seen early in the season. These guys are playing great football as of late. So in November, Kansas is second in the conference in rushing offense, right, first in rushing defense. You flip that, Baylor fourth in rushing offense, very, very good, but 10th in rushing defense. To me, that could be a spot where they do get got. Yes, Sawyer Robertson has been playing great football, but we saw last week, it doesn't matter how good you're playing offensively. It doesn't matter how good your quarterback is. If you cannot stop the run, you cannot stop this Kansas offense and Devin Neal. 
I do want to ask you this, though. The fatigue factor for Kansas, the fatigue factor, especially for Devin Neal, a guy that got almost 40 carries last week, does that worry you? Does that worry you? Or does that kind of just put more on the the, the shoulders of Jalen Daniels to maybe carry the, carry, carry the ball more than he has? Um, I don't know. I... Baylor's offense is, has absolutely put up numbers these last couple of weeks. And, and you look at – you want to look at, like, the rushing stats, and I think, like, seeing recent performances is a big deal. But I also look at some of these teams that they've played, you know, I guess in the month of November, right, which is only three teams. But, I mean, West Virginia on the road, like, yeah. And Garrett Green playing quarterback, sure, he had 129 yards on the ground himself. But – kind of stuffed Jaheim White a little bit and kind of bottled him up at that running back spot. Uh, it was more the powerful C.J. Donaldson that had more success on fewer carries, which I guess you would classify Devin Neal as maybe more of a power guy, guy between the tackles that's had a lot of success, doing multiple different things. But um, the the one that is concerning, though, is that performance, uh, not even against TCU. I, I don't know. I just – I don't think it's – Baylor's run defense is as bad as maybe you're making it out to be. I think uh, that Iowa State performance, I guess, was maybe a little bit concerning in the run game. Texas Tech, but who hasn't Texas Tech run the ball on this season? Uh, I I think I'm gonna I think I'm gonna go with the home team here. I like the way that Kansas is playing football right now, but I also like the way that Baylor's playing football. And in a game where you're going to give me points to the team playing at home. And Sawyer Robertson just playing really good football, rattling off five straight wins for the Baylor Bears after starting two and four uh, with a loss. Remember, at Utah, you had that loss early in the season. That's Utah's only win in the Big 12, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, and then uh, no, that wasn't that... a conference game, was it? Oh, that technically wasn't. Yeah, you're right. Because that Which was is why Baylor's still game. alive in the conference. That's right. And then uh, that overtime heartbreaking loss to Colorado, which, by the way, would we be talking about right now if, if Baylor had won that game and not given up that Hail Mary uh, on that last play of the game to, I believe, Will Shepard. Maybe it was LeJonte Wester, um, whoever it was. I mean, Baylor's only losses in the Big 12 right now are Colorado, BYU, and Iowa State, who are the, some of the top teams – in the Big 12, but those are all teams that Kansas has beaten. So we all know that Kansas Within is the capable last of beating month, literally. <laughs> yeah. Kansas is literally beating, be, capable of beating anyone. So I like your angle there. And I think that Kansas is playing remarkable football. And I think that they are and should be classified as one of the best teams in the Big 12. But I like Baylor at home right here. I think they're playing really good football. I think they're confident, playing confident football. And I think, uh, Sawyer Robertson could definitely be a game maker right here and uh, potentially elevate this Baylor team to a win at home against Kansas, which an eight and four season, which by the way, it it would be a bummer if Kansas missed a bowl game. I'm sneakily rooting for Kansas to make a bowl game right here because I, I think that they kind of deserve it with the way that they have played football all season. So maybe this is like the football gods that reward Kansas for playing the way that they have this year and give them that win. But I, I do like the way that Baylor's been playing, and maybe I'll regret picking that. And because I, I can see a situation where Kansas wins, but and blows out. I, I can see a situation where Baylor, you know, forces some turnovers and uh, has some explosive plays and blows out Kansas. I could also see Kansas blowing out Baylor. I mean, Kansas did not punt a single time against Colorado, right? That's how good of football Kansas is playing right now. So it feels a little bit icky to pick against them, but I'll, I'll take Baylor in this spot at home. Yeah, I, which is fine, and I I totally get that at home. Baylor's also playing great football. This is exactly why we previewed this game. It's going to be awesome to watch. I brought up the Devin Neal point and the fatigue factor there because Daniel Hyshaw, who is, I think, one of the better backup running backs or tandem running backs in the Big 12, he's in the portal right now, which is just killer. At, I mean, at time when you're starting to play good football and – Regardless, I you know he wants to continue his education elsewhere. Wants to get more opportunities next year, which is fine. But it, it would be nice to have, especially if Daniel Devin Neal is you know 
fatigued because he did get the ball so many times. And and maybe Baylor is not quite dealing with that fatigue, but everyone's banged up, I think, in late November. That's what makes these games so fun. It is a game where Kansas does have a lot at stake there, you know, to make a bowl game. So I do think Devin Neal will be ready to get after it. But it's just something I'm, I'm going to be keeping an eye on early in the game. If he looks slow, if he's struggling early in the game, that could be a spot where I could maybe change my feeling on how Kansas could be going. And maybe you see a spot where Baylor can really take it, take advantage of that. Uh, I believe Baylor, by the way, is the are they the only team in the Big Twelve to have rattled off. No, I guess Baylor BYU. and BYU are the only two teams that have rattled off five straight Big Twelve wins this year. Who would have thought? Who would have thought? Yeah, who would have thought, man? Who by the way, in no, in November, Kansas against you know the three the four top you know best teams in the conference, you know Kansas is. 51% on third down. 51%. <laughs> yeah. Just third in the country, right? Yeah, well, it's it's in November, technically. Like it's, well, I know, but they're also 51.5% on third down for the whole season, if you extrapolate that, and that's third in the entire country. They're also third in red zone offense, and Baylor is uh, 78th in red zone defense. But Baylor's been able to get off the field, so... Uh, Thanks to that run defense on early downs and being able to pin your ears back and get after quarterbacks, they've also forced some turnovers too. But uh, I, it's been yeah, frustrating. It, I, I'm sure Kansas fans, because you're hearing these stats and you're like, "Gosh, what could have been for this Kansas team?" Because not that you're not going to have talent like this again, but like it, it's Kansas. Let's be honest here. I love Lance Leipold, but it's like, where has it gone wrong early in the season? Little margins was the problem. As a guy that held up. You know Kansas ticket to, to win the Big Twelve preseason. It's been like I'm I'm happy to see because I can be like, yeah, I saw something, I saw something, but it was a little too little, too late. Regardless, though, it's gonna be an awesome game.